So yeah, it's about two o'clock in the morning, but I wanted to make this uh, recording. What is, and I'm going to tell you, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? My purpose is to, my ultimate purpose is try to pull some people out of Babylon. The Bible says, he that wins souls covers a multitude of sins, right? If you can pull some people out of Babylon, they don't even know that they're in Babylon. That's First, you have to reveal what Babylon is, that you're in Babylon. <laughs> Most people don't even know they're in Babylon. I know I didn't. You know, you think America, the Christian nation, but you're surrounded by Babylonian symbology and the images and everything else. When God revealed the code to me, I call it the creation code. I had already studied my Bible for 20 years or more. The Bible, I can rightly divide it. I can teach it. I can talk about the rapture and born again by faith, walking in the spirit, the tribulation, the millennium, the book of Revelation. I can talk about you know, Genesis, Ephesians, Colossians, and all that, but it, it, they're all saying the same thing. See, this is the problem with sitting in church for 20 years, when if they would, if they actually just broke it down really to its root, you could get this thing faster. It, you, could, you could see the source faster. There's some common denominators in this world. Every verse of the Bible Every word, every symbol, every shape is flesh versus spirit. You see it in Genesis 3. You see it in Genesis 4. Cain killed Abel. You see the devil tried to pull, deceive Eve, pulled her down. Then you see Eve pulled Adam down. You know. And so the flesh is always trying to pull you down. And it doesn't have to be another person. It could be your own flesh. If you're born again, and you must be born again, the Bible says, you must be born again. If you're born again, you have a dual nature. If you're not born again, you just have a sinful nature, and you're just going around a cycle. You're like an AI flesh mind program. You don't even know it. Your thoughts are not your own. You're not independent. You're just run by the spirit of the age. The music controls you. The TV controls you. Your bloodline controls you, your culture controls you, the news, something controls you in this system, and you're animated by the, the fake reality system. It's a death cult. That's why you keep doing the same stuff over and over and over and over. You can't escape the loop-de-loop -loop because you're in a death cult and you have no power. The only way you're going to escape is by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth. You have no power. You have no power to escape Babylon in your own power. Because you have no power. The flesh is nothing but weakness. The flesh is nothing but sin. The flesh is under law. This is why you're under guilt, shame, condemnation. You think you're always worried about what the preacher's thinking or somebody's... You, you, do, you, you feel guilty for... Because the law, the flesh is under law. The blue sky is the blue letter law. That's why the police have blue lights flashing. Because it represents the law. Blue is the law. In the Old Testament, they put blue fringes uh, around to remind them of the law. But the letter killeth. The law kills you. Dr. Law pushes you to Dr. Grace. Who's Dr. Grace? Jesus, full of grace and truth. So when you enter into grace and truth... You rise above the law because you're a law unto yourself because you're seated in the heavenlies in Christ. You have the mind of Christ. You know all things in Christ. You just don't know it because the churches, the legalistic churches, try to keep you from knowing this stuff because once you know it, you leave and you don't, you, you're not in that box anymore. You leave the box. As you step out of the boxes of the system, the boxes hate it. Because you're no longer supporting their little agenda. The agenda should be freedom. 
If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If the truth shall make you free, you shall be free indeed, right? Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Eternal life is a person. Jesus, he said, drink of my blood, eat of my flesh. So when you go to the restaurant and you're eating and drinking, you're actually in type and shadow eating and drinking of Christ. In the creation, you're eating of yourself. The, the snake eats itself. The creation eats itself to survive in the natural. But what, are you, what about eternal life? What about eternal life? Where are you going to get eternal life? You've got to eat and drink of that eternal life. If you start to study the etymology of words, that just means where it's sourced. The etymology of a word is where it's sourced at, where it comes from. Words can have brothers and sisters or cognates. And so the source of a word, you go back to its source. So when you think about that eternal life, that is he, that over there, him, him, it, hit, God hits you, and it follows because it is information technology trying to form you in the inner man. And so it information technology is the word craft. Technology is craft words. So the word craft, Jesus is the word. The word craft is all around you. Everything is a word. All objects are object lessons. All objects are words. Your body language reveals everything. You can watch somebody's body language and know what they're thinking. If you tell them that you under, that you studied body language for years, they get kind of paranoid that you're reading their mind. But it's okay. We're all the same, really. We all are. We all came from the same place. When you look at a person, a person who's still under law, guilt, shame, condemnation, insecurities, embarrassment, all that stuff. When you talk to a person who's still in the flesh mind and hasn't entered into the spirit mind, they're worried about some kind of weird internal stuff going on in their world. But once you hit the spirit mind, you don't look at that person according to the flesh anymore. You look at that person according to the spirit. And so when you look at a person, you don't look at them where they are now. You look at them where Jesus sees them going because they're going to be like Jesus if they're saved. If they get born again, if they're being called, if they're the elect, if they're the saints. So the word saint has an S and ain't. So you were ain'ts until you were integrated in. The letter S is integration. You're integrated in as a, as a ain't back to a saint, sainthood. The elect, God chooses his elect. That's why you're the elected. And so... The elect, so when you go to a Coca-Cola machine or a Pepsi machine, you select what product you want, produce, product. You push the button and the produce comes out the bottom. You grab it just like the baby comes out. The woman has a baby. The baby comes out. The doctor grabs it. comes out to the dock. The doctor is the dock. So the baby, the vessel, the ship, the baby ship comes out and it enters to the dock. The doctor grabs the baby. Because it's a dock. The baby's a ship. Just like you're a ship. Everything's a ship. And the reason everything is a ship. Because you're the hip of the spirit. The material ram is the hip side of the spirit. And S is integrating the hip back into the spirit. Now the S is also the snake. It's the sine wave. The sin wave. And God is using the sine wave. Which is can be plotted as a clock. The sine wave is the up and down wave, but it also can be plotted as a clock and a cycle. So the clock is the sine wave. The clock is the snake. Time is befallen. Time is not really real. Space is not really real. The reason you need space is because you, you, you need a contrast. So here's an object here. I'm just sitting in my car just recording this because it's just... It's kind of cool just to sit in your car and record a message. So I'm holding the steering wheel, but I'm looking out at the house, and there's space between this car and that house. Why is there space? Because you need contrast to be able to learn. So you look off in the distance, you see a tree, 
You see a shed, you see a building, you see a house, you see a car. There's contrast that teaches you through these object lessons. Space really doesn't exist. Time doesn't exist. It's not real. Time is befallen. Adam and Eve dropped us down into time. Befallen. But God uses that cycle, that time cycle, to birth in. So when you're traveling somewhere, the same word travel, the same word travail is travel. Travel means travail. So you're being birthed. So as you as you travel in space-time, which is not even real, it's a projection, but it feels like it's real. It's actually the holograms moving around you. So as you're traveling, you're travailing. You're travailing in birth pains until Christ be formed in you. That's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, I travail in birth pains till Christ be formed in you. He also said in places, he says, I'm absent in the body, but I'm there in, I'm there in the spirit. Right? Travailing in birth pains till Christ be formed in you. So the sine wave experience down here is a cycle. Just like the moon goes around the earth, 28 days and the moon represents the blood of Jesus the woman has to have a blood flow every 28 days the issue of blood because she has to birth she has to have the blood covering because she's birthing in a creature down here in befallen time there has to be a type and shadow of a blood covering that's why the stop signs are red the blood covering is everywhere and so this place would be destroyed without the blood covering in types and shadows. This is a book. It's a hologram. And it's written by one person. And that's Jesus. And it's a love story that keeps repeating over and 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 over till you get it right. Do it again till you get it right. You need to love, you need to learn to love the right way. Do it again. Do it again. Why do we keep going through this cycle over and over? It's a simulated training program. Train. You jump on a train and you go down the track. You, so every day is a training process. You need a new training. You need to be trained. You need Okay, you messed up there. Let's go through some more training. You got mad. You threw a fit. You got depressed. You got whatever. Let's, all right. Let's go through some more training. You go through it a thousand million times through the cycles to birth in. Because you're learning not to be in the horizontal plane, which is the flesh mind, the whore plane, which is the old Adam, the old Adamic nature. You're learning to move to the spirit plane, the mind of Christ, which is upright. So the horizontal plane, the, ho the, the, the flesh plane, where all the birthing is going on is that's why when you when the man and woman lay down in the bed it's horizontal so the birthing process is down here in the the 3d plane but you're being but you're going through the cycles you're going through the drama you're going through the through the the struggles through the travail, to the travel, you you think you're going somewhere, but uh, you know somebody says, "Well, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go somewhere else." Well, if you go there, you're still there. No matter where you go, you're still there. You're here or there. What's the difference between here and there? The letter T. What is the T? T is the cross. God is everywhere. You can dig down into hell. You can go to heaven. You can go anywhere. God is still there. God is everywhere. And if you go here or there, you're still here because it's T-H-E-R. T-H-E-R-E. -E. Here or there is still here with a T. So T is the cross. It's a projection from the cross. And so everywhere you go, you're still there. You're still here. He, that, it is still hitting you. And he's hitting your inner man to birth in the new man. God is trying to birth in the new creature through the seed of the Word of God. So when the man and the woman make a baby, the seed goes in the womb, and there's a conception. So when God hits you with the Word of God, and He keeps hitting you with the truth, He that hath the Son hath life, but he that hath not the Son hath not life, and the wrath of God abides on him. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. M-O-R means death. So you're in a mortal realm. You're in a death cult. You're born in time, which is befallen. And the whole purpose of going through the repeat simulation is to pull you out of Babylon, pull you out of the flesh mind, pull you out of the old Adam into the new Adam. Because the first Adam died and brought death. But the second Adam brought life Jesus is the second Adam but he was before Adam and that's why he says I am I am that I am so when you say I am John or I am Susie or I am uh, Christopher or I am Christine you're still saying I am you're a derivative from the I am you're off river derive is derivative and it means off river you derive from Jesus and so the flow is where you want to get at but you can't get in the flow without the spirit because the spirit is the flow the spirit is the ether of this whole place and if you can get into the flow, God can reveal all this stuff to you without you needing a teacher. And all you have to do is open up the Bible and read it. And there's there's different layers of understanding in the Bible. Well, you can read a verse and you can read it again and read it again and see something new. But you can also see the code, the creation code in the Bible. There's multi-layers here. You're in a multi-layer reality. It's playing out in 3D, but it's already settled in 5D. And everything that you're doing has already been done. Every thought that you have has already been thought. There's no new thought. There's no new game. There's no new program. Program is Pro-G Ram. The Ram caught in the thicket before is is pro or in front of g is seven golgotha it is finished the cross the ram caught in the thicket so everything is that program and so that program repeats day after day after day after day after day after day till you get it right till you learn how to love till you get more true till you get settled till you get balanced till you get centered you know till you learn how to balance or center or you learn how to think right Sound doctrine. A lot of stuff I post. I'm trying to pull some people out of different types of belief systems back to the, the whole truth. I've studied all their different doctrines, you know. And everything they're saying has already been said in Proverbs and Psalms and Genesis and Ephesians and Galatians. They think they have something new, but it's already been said. And the 66 books of the Bible give you the whole pie. And even if you don't see the code, even if you don't see the esoteric side, even if you don't see the types and shadows and the archetypes, and if you don't see that time doesn't exist or space doesn't exist, it doesn't matter. Just open up that Bible, crack the Bible open, start reading it. Because it is the truth. It's compiled. It's many pieces into one book. But as you, as you read the Bible, you'll find out the same thing that's being said in Ephesians is being said in Colossians. And so you can take one book and read that book and you get the same truth as you get in the whole Bible. So you see the whole truth in the parts and the parts in the whole. And then if you can lift and come off that 2D book into 3D, you can realize, hey, the whole is in the parts and the parts are in the whole. It's a hologram. It's a fractal hologram. And it's a truth and it's a story. It's a multi-dimensional fractal hologram because God is everywhere. 
And it doesn't matter if it's 1D, 2D, 3D, 5D, 7D, 9D, 11D, whatever. It's the same love story being played out every day. Parents love the children. Children love the parents. Husband loves the wife. You know, the, the, the boss is supposed to uh, treat the employees right. The employees are supposed to submit to the boss right. There's certain patterns that follow. You're supposed to love your neighbors yourself. You're supposed to learn how to love your enemy. Give them, give them bread and water, and it heaps coals of fire. They might get. They might not be your enemy. Eventually, they might be your friend. You might win an enemy. So my whole goal. Just in case somebody's wondering, why is books posting all this other stuff? Why ain't he just reading the Bible? I do. I can. I've done it before. I've taught. The, I've taught Ephesians verse by verse. I've taught Colossians verse by verse. I taught Revelation. I've done it. But it's saying the same thing. No matter what you're, where you're at, what you're talking about, we go back to one simple truth. The lamb slain before the foundation world set up a system that's a sacrificial redemptive system. And so how do you enter in to heaven? By faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So what I try to do is I try to show people in all the different realms, all the different situations, all the object lessons, Try to show people that it's faith alone. It's faith. You're saved by faith. You walk by faith. Everything's by faith. The objects that are in front of you appear by faith. It's all by faith. This place is going to burn up. Your life is a vapor. This place will burn up. The wood, hay, and stubble is going to burn up. The earth is going to burn up. The stars are going to fall from the heaven. It's all going to burn up. There's going to be a new heaven and new earth. Just like you get a spiritual a new spiritual body, the earth is going to get a new spiritual body. And those who reject Jesus are going to have to burn forever. Sorry. Some people won't make it. I'm sorry. This is why God is so patient with the cycles. And this is why they want to destroy the earth. They want to, to abort the birthing process. They want to abort it all. The AI machine will try to destroy the earth. But Jesus comes back to destroy those that would destroy the earth. You get to a point in life after you've went through enough cycles that you know that's all there is. Just plucking people out. If you're married, you gotta you take care of your family, you know, sacrifice, go to work, play the game, you go to work, and you like to have a peaceful home, you know. You'd like to have a home where you can sit, go home and meditate and think and have peace. But when you turn the TV on, Babylon's coming through your TV. When you turn the music on, Babylon's coming through the TV. So you're under attack. I'm trying to show people that if there's MK Ultra mind control hitting you 24-7, seven, seven days a week to keep you from seeing this stuff. It's deep. But you've been deceived your whole life. Your bloodline has deceived you. Your culture has deceived you. Dr. Fake has deceived you. The education system has deceived you. <clears throat> the, med med the medical system has deceived you. You deceived yourself. You want, you know, why did I get mixed up with that narcissist? Well, the red flags were there, but you chose, you wanted it. The reason you got mixed up with the psychopath, the sociopath, the narcissist, because that's what you wanted. You wanted to believe the lie. You knew it. The red flags were obvious. They were there. But you wanted it. You can't blame the narcissist. They gave you the dream, the fake reality you wanted. The narcissist did you a favor. The purpose of a narcissist or a sociopath, datingasociopath.com, go read the comments. The purpose of dating a sociopath or a narcissist or a Jezebel or a Delilah or whatever, the purpose of dating those is God allowed it to wake you up that it's, that it's you. You wanted to believe. They gave you a fake reality. 
You wanted that fake reality, so they gave it to you. That's what Babylon is. Babylon is a system of fake reality, and it will give you the fake reality you want because that's the dark side. But God, who is truth, is going to give you some strong medicine. He's going to dispense. That's why it's dispensations. He's going to dispense some strong medicine that's going to hurt. But the truth will set you free. Yes, it's painful because you've got to admit you believe lies. You've got to admit you're a liar. You've got to admit you're a sinner. You've got to admit you're deceived. You've got to admit that you got hooked up with the narcissist because you wanted to. You wanted that fake reality. You wanted those lies. You wanted the delusion. You wanted the easy life in a sacrificial redemptive system. Jesus went to the cross because this is a painful place. You wanted the ease and the comfort. You didn't want to face reality. You wanted to live in your dream world. So the narcissist, the psych psychopath, the sociopath gave you that fake world. But those who speak the truth and hurt you with the truth, and it's not to hurt you, it's to wake you up. It's to pull you out of Babylon. And it stings. We're not trying to hurt you like hurt you, hurt you. We're trying to sting you. We're trying to, we're trying to do some shock treatment. Actually, the elect, E-L-E-C-T, the, the elect have been shocked out of Babylon. Seriously, ECT means electroconvulsive therapy. So the elect have been shocked out of Babylon. That's why you're the elect. You, you got shocked. I'm in a dream. I'm in Babylon. This is fake. I've been the flesh. I'm in sin. I'm, I deserve hell. You got shocked by the word of God and you, you became the elect because you received it. You got shocked out of Babylon. So that shock treatment pulled you out of Babylon. So we have to hit you with the truth. We have to hit you with hard truth because we love you. You have to be shocked out of Babylon because it's so, it's, it's so mesmerized. I mean, it's so, it's not even, it's so comfortable to the flesh mind that the flesh mind needs to be shocked. You've got to have some shock treatment. People go get, shock treatment is a proven therapy. People have habits or wrong ways of think, and they shock, you know, you, that's what fasting does. Fasting will shock you out of your, 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 your delusions. If you can do a 24-hour fast, you're going to shock, you're going to break some strongholds. Some people can't stop lying. Some people can't stop drinking. Some people can't stop smoking. Some people can't stop uh, manipulating. Some people can't stop uh, gaslighting. Some people just can't stop. They need some shock treatment. That they're evil. That their flesh is nothing but sin. Your old Adamic nature is damned. That's why it's Adamic nature. It's condemned. It's evil. The first Adam brought death. The second Adam, who is Jesus, brought life. And so you must be born from above. You must be born again. And how do you get born again? You got to take you got to take it. You receive the seed of the word of God by faith. You receive the spirit by faith. You receive Jesus into your heart by faith. Lord, come into my heart and save me. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve hell. I know I've done evil. I'm so evil, Lord. Can you even save me? Yes, that's why I went to the cross. Yes, he can save a murderer. Yes, he can save an adulterer. Yes, he can save a thief. Yes, he can save a witch. God can save anybody. You just have to run to Jesus. You look and live. As Moses lifted up the serpent, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Son of God. Jesus, the Son of God. Look and live. So Jesus was nailed to the cross. Moses lifted up that snake that was nailed to that post, that cross, as a in the Old Testament as a as a for a foreknowledge or a precog or a forecast that Jesus was going to the cross and he became the snake on that cross for you. 
He took on your sin. He took your reptilian sin nature and nailed it to the cross. And the way you appropriate that that righteousness from Jesus is by faith because it was 2,000 years ago. How can it not? How can it be anything else but faith? It can't be a works-based system because it was 2,000 years ago. It has to be faith-based. And it was actually before the foundation of the world it was finished. So it has to be faith-based because it was before the foundation of the world. Once you get born again and saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, you're an extraterrestrial. And you become a targeted individual because everybody of the world hates you. And it's not that they mean to. They're just of the flesh. And the flesh hates the Spirit because it convicts them. You don't even have to say anything. Just walk in the room, they get convicted. You don't even have to. You're not judging them. Because you know you were just as bad, still are just bad. But it's Christ in you that's the righteousness. But they get convicted because the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Sin because they're going to hell. Righteousness because Jesus alone is righteous and they're not. Judgment because there is a judgment. Sin because they were born in sin. In sin did my mother conceive me. Your children are sinners. You're a sinner. Your parents are sinners. Unless they get saved by faith, they're going to die in their sin. Everybody's born in the old Adam. Why am I doing what I'm doing? If one person... I really don't want a lot of subscribers ever again, (laughs) to be honest with you. When you have 10,000 subscribers, you got emails coming in and comments like you ain't ever seen. It's a lot. I would just rather throw the truth out there, not have to do a whole lot of comment. I got some people that I've known on here for a long time. I like to talk to them. I know them. But when you have a lot of drama and com- and people from all walks of life commenting and stuff, it's like, okay, I've, I've heard this a thousand times. Here it is again. So the Uber, when you do Uber or Lyft or any kind of ride share or whatever, you, people start to say, well, blah, 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 blah. It's the same conversation. After you do it enough years, you've heard the same conversation a thousand times. They don't have anything new to say. And when you tell them, say, look, you know how many times I've been asked that same question? What's your worst, what's your worst Uber experience? What's your best experience? How, what's your best tip? I've heard it a thousand times. It's not exciting anymore. The only thing that's exciting is to see people get pulled out of Babylon and escape Babylon or have a revelation or have a new birthing or a new, they're moving to their new state. Time, let me tell you what time is. Time is T, which is the cross. I am is instant message. E is the spirit. So time is the instant message By the spirit of the cross. So every moment that you walk, every moment, not just every day, but every moment the cross is being preached. Time is a repeat, moment by moment, preaching of the cross. To try to pull you back into faith where you belong. Time is just a repeat. Daily, yearly, weekly, monthly moment by moment, second, every 60 seconds, every 30 seconds, every 10 seconds, the cross is being preached every moment of every day. That's why it's a moment. M-O-M-E-N-T, modus operandi, ment, mental. The hologram, the etymology, the creation code reveal that time and space only exist to pull you out of your fake reality, which is Babylonian fake reality, to pull you out of the fake reality that you're in into real reality, which is the spirit mind, which is in the now, outside of time. If you're inside time and you believe it, you believe the drama, you're still in fake reality. The drama is only a repeat. You've already seen it a thousand times. You knew it from a child. You saw your parents. Everything your parents went through, you're going through. It's a repeat. 
to wake you up, to pull you out of time. You don't want to be a time traveler. You want to be out of time. You want to be in the now. You want to see the archetypes. You want to see the arch. Why do you think you have an arch over your eye? Now listen to this. Listen. Please listen. Your eyebrow is an arch. If you really want to see, pay attention to the arch. The archetypes. A-R-C-H. Arch types. If you want to escape time, start studying the arch types. The archetypes. A-R-C-H-E is spirit types. Archetypes. And when you start to see the patterns repeating, you start to escape time. The reason that your eyebrow is called brow is because it's bow. You, 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 you condescend your forehead, your brow, your eyes. If you really want to see through this thing, you got to claim the blood and you got to see the archetypes. And you'll find out that time don't exist. Space don't exist. It's a holographic projection of the story of the cross. That's all. And the purpose for being in Babylon, the purpose for being in your routine, the purpose for being in your job, your marriage, your situation, is to birth you into the spirit mind. If you can get by yourself for 10 years, if you can get by yourself for 7 years, and just do meditation, it'll, it'll be revealed. If you can't, you might have to do some fasting. But if you cut the music off, see, music is blinding everybody. The Gentile music is blinding you. The Gentile TV, television is blinding you. Television is actually just a mirror of yourself. If you really pay attention to your thoughts and you just scroll through the TV, you'll see your own thoughts projecting back at you. It's about you. It's about you. And it's about you in Christ. Because it's about Jesus, but you're in Jesus. It's about Jesus, but it's also about you because you're in Christ. And this whole thing is about Jesus getting the glory. And so when you wake up, you enter into praise and worship outside of time. Think about the angels. The angels are up there praising God right now. Now, if they decide to come down here, they leave the reality of praising God and they step down into this fake reality, this simulation, and bring us a message because they're messengers. The purpose of an angel is a messenger. So the angels are up there in real reality praising God. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. So an angel can step down here at any moment but he's stepping down into fake reality. But when he's down here, he knows that everything he's doing, he's pra it's all a praise and worship service, and you're moving towards that. Right now, you're a little lower than angels, but eventually you'll be higher than angels, and you're going to actually judge angels. So they don't judge you just like you don't judge somebody else because you know it's a birthing process. So when, when somebody says, well, I don't want you to... Uh, somebody said this to me the other day. I was like, what are you talking about? Listen. I don't want you to be disappointed in me. What are you talking about? How can I ever be disappointed in anybody? Especially if you love somebody. You know it's a birthing process. They're, they're on a journey. They're on a journey of discovery. They're on a journey just like you are. We're all on the same journey. We're still in this body. That means we still got something to learn. And so to be disappointed in somebody is to look at them in the present and say they're lesser than you. But if you look at a person in the future where they're called to be, and you can actually see their future by their name, if you look at them in the future and you look at them as an equal, you can't be disappointed because you're disappointed in yourself. Because you're a person, she's a person, per the sun. How can you be? How can I be disappointed in somebody when I'm not their God? God is their God. Yeah, it might hurt you that you, you want somebody to be healthy and you love somebody and you 
probably love them more than they love themselves because you can tell by the way they treat their body, their ship, their body ship. That you can tell by the fact that they're doing whatever they're doing that they don't really have self love. So it hurts. That might be called disappointment, but it's not the same concept. So when you look at your your friend or your spouse or your love or your family or your children or whoever you're looking at, don't be disappointed. See their future. Try to pull them up. Try to help them. Try to wake them up. Snap them out of it. That's what this is about. It's to pull people up. It's not to step on them. It's not to look at them and be disappointed in them. There's a lot of parents, they, they're doing that to their children. And why? They're in the discovery process too. Just like you are a parent. You don't know it all. We're all in the discovery process. So to look down on somebody and to put a guilt trip on somebody or be disappointed on, in somebody is the flesh mind. It's not the spirit mind. It's, 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 it's Babylon. It's fake. When you love somebody, you see their future and where they can be, not where they are, because you're just you're you're where they are. You're in the same place. You're actually looking at yourself in a different time frame or a different situation or a different choice. So anyway, what I'm doing is what you should be doing. Try to lift people up, pull them out of Babylon. But in Galatians 6, he that is spiritual restore such a one with the spirit of meekness lest you fall in the same condemnation that proves right there that verse that you can't judge somebody that you can't be disappointed in somebody because you could fall right into it with them at a in a split second because it's easy to forget where you're at or who you it's easy to forget who you are and think about oh this is where this is who i am down here get your identity and something down here it's easy to fall short and fall back to earth and get your identity down here, but you snap back out of it, hopefully, really quick, you know. That's what I'm doing. Just trying to help some people escape this fake reality. I try to have fun while I'm here. Who knows how long it'll last. I'm ready. My whole goal. I'm ready to leave here now. But my whole goal. If I'm going to be here. I want to have longevity. That's why fasting is important. If you really unfold the, the word fasting. With the etymology. You'll find out that it reverses your age. The etymology reveals it. It gives you strength. It breaks strongholds. Fasting is for today. It ain't just for the Old Testament. It's for each age. Fasting makes you fast. Fasting breaks the cycle. Fasting breaks time. And I know that's hard to understand, but it's the truth. 